Good evening traders, welcome to Trading Tuesdays with Phoenix Blue. Uh, today we're going to have a look at some macro data that's come out in the last week and it is NFP week guys. So if you're experienced traders, new traders, however long you've been trading, you should always know that non-farm payroll is the first Friday of each month. Okay, now this is a month or a week that you need to be very careful with your trading. Okay, major news announcement this Friday. You'll also see, um, especially if you're intraday traders, be aware of your risk position, i.e. how much exposure do you have in the market to the dollar. Um, this is something that you've got to be aware of whether you're experienced or novice. I've worked with many people, thousands of people in fact, over the fa last five years and I've seen so many people get enticed into trading non-farm payroll because of the volatility and how much it moves and we usually find that the draw to that is how much money can be made and that's usually the the draw with trading why do people want to trade It's because of how much money can be made the one thing that people never think about is how much money can be lost Okay, so Phoenix Blue, the one thing we teach you is capital preservation. Whenever you've got capital preservation, you will always be able to make money. Your first job as a trader is not to lose money. Your next job is to make money. And long may this year continue. I know we're only one month and a couple of days in, but I've got to say it has been a fantastic start to the year for Phoenix Blue. We've nailed it so far, and February started off just as good. Um, okay, so let's go back to the data. So Bank of Japan, so they've cut into negative territory, i.e. cut rates to minus 0.1%. What does that mean? Well, in essence, it means it costs money to hold money in the banks. Okay, so therefore they're trying to utilize the capital trying to get institutions and financial banks to, to use their capital. In. And what you'll find is this is a move to try and weaken the yen, i.e. for these people or institutions to sell yen and buy something else. So it's a move to weaken yen, um, stimulating Japanese economy, maybe helping exports, etc. So Bank of Japan have made a huge move there. Whether it's in anticipation that we're going to get a financial collapse and they're protecting the the risk off scenario, and what we mean by that, guys, is when markets go into uncertain territory, i.e., equities don't start or don't keep providing yields, then what you'll find is there's a money flow, and the money flow will come out of equities and it will go into what we call safe havens, and this is usually when we're in a risk off scenario. So what will happen is you'll find that money will flow out of equities and it will go into somewhere like the Japanese yen. It will go into somewhere like gold. Hence, we were looking at trading gold and we did trade gold and we're still running gold now from 1075 and we are looking to add in. We will talk about that in a little bit. So the Japanese yen, maybe this was a protection move um, if the Bank of Japan believe that they're going to see a collapse or it's they really do want it a lot weaker. All we can do is we can trade with our fundamental bias but we will trade also with technicals. The next bit of data we're going to look at is the Swiss National Bank. Uh, Mr. Jordan spoke today and he mentioned that possible intervention in the near future as the Swiss franc is still considered as overvalued. So trading long dollar Swiss or sh selling Swiss um, from technical levels will pay dividend, I believe. So we're long dollar Swiss currently from 0 0.9970. We've been in it a couple of weeks and it's doing very, very well. We are looking to add it in. Um, and we'll go through these charts, by the way, in a minute. So don't worry about trying to remember the numbers and things that I'm saying. The next bank, the next two banks were very, very similar. Um, the Bank of Australia, they spoke early hours of this morning. And Bank RBNZ, Royal Bank of National Bank of New Zealand, they spoke last week. Uh, similar stance, uh, although the economy in Australia is slightly better and jobs are good, uh, housing prices are booming, um, but they've both kept their rates on hold um, and have said that they're willing to do more easing or cuts should they deem necessary. Okay, so what we have here is 
especially with the RBNZ, okay, they have openly said that they will do more easing if necessary. Now, I have done a post on this on Instagram, so please read the post, and that's Phoenix Blue Trading on Instagram. Um, now, we're going to have a look at certain charts today. So the charts we're going to have a look at are as follows. So in the FX market, we're going to look at Euro Dollar, we're going to look at Dollar CAD, Cable, also known as GBP USD, uh, New Zealand USD. We've currently got two trades running on that live. Um, we have no risk, no exposure in that market anymore. Our second position went in yesterday. We've already got half off and stops at break even, so it's always a great position to be in. Aussie USD and Dollar Swiss. Currently, one trade running live in Dollar Swiss. Our risk off trades. So we'll be looking at dollar yen, CAD yen, and the S&P 500. And then finally, commodity market, we're going to look at gold and WTI, which we do have a trade running in gold, which you will see. Okay, so we're just going to move over to these charts now. Starting with the euro dollar, what you'll see is we've got a symmetrical triangle forming, but we've also got a base and a floor um, so we can see the symmetrical triangle quite clearly here, but we can also see the ceiling here at 1.0970 up to about 1.1. Okay, then we've got this nice floor running through here. We can see it was broken through and came straight back in, and this is around 1.08 to 1.0790. Now, intraday traders, we could have been looking for opportunities coming off the top of this trend line. Now, if we look at this move, this point here, would there have been anything on a smaller time frame? Our bias was short. I did mention this in trading Tuesday, in the morning review. Sorry, we would be looking for short opportunities from here. Although I haven't actually taken advantage of this market here, I'm just going to move down to a smaller time frame and just see what we could see. So we can see that the market is producing higher highs, running up into this zone. Here's our blue trend line from the daily chart. What we can see is we can see the market came up, broke through, pulled back down, and then came up and tested the same area again. So you actually got a double top on the smaller time frame, which we could have sold underneath the neckline. You could have had a 20-point stop there, and we, you'd currently be sitting around 15 points up, 15 pips up. It did move a maximum of 28 pips so far in the day. Um, it's not something I've traded. Um, I didn't take that opportunity today. Uh, as you can see, I've got a resting order sat in here at 109.70s. I will be looking to trade this back down to the 108s and then looking for further downside to the 2015 lows at 105s. Okay, why are we looking for this kind of move? Well, we've got monetary policy divergences between not just um, what's happening in the, in the Eurozone, but we've also got the US talking about potential rate increases. Uh, again. Now March is the big month for the US, so we need good numbers to come out of NFP if they are probably going to consider um, looking at raising rates again. The downside that we have now is the effects of the global economy. They're weighing on uh, the FOMC members' decision whether they're going to go ahead and raise rates again. But we've got the ECB that are cutting rates and doing further easing. So this is why we're looking at downside fundamentally. Okay. Um, next thing we're going to look at is the Canadian dollar. Okay. Like I said on our previous videos, guys, if you've been, or traders, if you've been watching our previous videos, you'll notice that we had a losing trade in, in 1.4 area. And we're looking to see if we can get a close above here or we're going to look for going long from around 138.20s, 138.30s, in and around this green box down here. We do believe that this market will run up to test these highs again, and our midterm targets are going to be around 1.5. Okay, so that's the Canadian dollar. The basis of our fundamental analysis in here is not just that we believe that the Canadian economy is weak, it's what's going on with oil. Okay, we've got Iran now back in the market pumping at will. We've got OPEC pumping at will, raising the ceilings. So we've got a comp we've got oversupply of oil and not the demand for it. 
So we're we're targeting twenty-five dollars as a first target on oil and twenty dollars potentially as a longer term target, which will have a knock on effect on Canadian dollar. It'll also have a knock on effect on the Norwegian kroner. So you can have a look at trading one or the other if this is something that you do trade. Okay. Next market, we're looking at GBP USD. So this is cable. Uh, we've had a bullish week this week so far. Um, we were at an 18-month extreme right down here by the Commitment of Traders report. So we were envisaging a bullish move in cable. Were we trading this? We weren't. No. But if you were to trade it because it is a contrarian trade, I would advise that you look at doing this in a reduced risk or um, definitely you've got to make sure that when you're going against the predominant trend you make sure you understand your exposure to the market and your risk management we're going to look for shorts anyway in around 140, late 145s, 146s and we're looking at a longer term target of around 1.36, 1.37 so this will be one we're looking to trade and hold Okay, Kiwi dollar, well you can see our original position up from up here at 68.60 we've banked money all the way down we have taken another couple of positions in this, at, at which point we did get stopped out on those um, by this engulfing candle here. We also then took another trade yesterday. We went short at 65.50 through here. You can see our red box was already highlighted. We went short at 65.60. We're in this market. Um, I actually, in fact, I need to move my stops to break even. I haven't done that yet. That's this red line here. So stops will be break even. Our first position has already exited just down here at 64.80. Okay, so we've had a nice trade, nice hit on that today. Aussie dollar, well, where we've got this red arrow, we're looking at the market to come back and test this trend line and our supply zone. It did that in here, but our entry was eight pips above the high of this, so we actually didn't catch this move down, which would which was a real shame because we would have nailed it and we would have already banked our first profits and stops would have been at break even and it would have really cemented our the start to February. Okay, so Aussie dollar was still bearish. We're still looking for another opportunity to get into this market because we can see we envisage the market at least coming down to test these lows down here before moving on swiftly down to 65 first and then potentially 63. The next one, well, dollar Swiss. This is the market we're currently in from just through here, 99.70. We've had first lots of money off somewhere through here at 1080. And then the market's carried on moving. It got very close to our final target, but then it started to pull back. Well, pull back, that's fine. We'll look to add in on any pullback. So our initial pullback entry is in around 1.0060. But I'll be looking at potentially taking uh, an order in and around this area here. We can see clear structure through here. So I'll be looking at somewhere through there. Um, obviously, my protege clients, private clients, will get exactly where I'm getting short, uh, sorry, getting long or shorting the Swiss franc here. So they'll, they'll know my exact numbers. The next one we're going to look at is part of our risk off trade. It's the dollar yen. Okay. Now, dollar yen, let me just zoom zoom out a little bit so we can see what was going on here. Well, we could see this green box. This is pretty much the zone that it's been operating in since December 14. It did double top outside of it, came straight back in the zone, and then it had another break up and we can see here we've got another little supply area that'll be very interesting in around 124s. But the market, after what the Bank of Japan said, came straight out to test this size in around 121.50s, 121.80s. Okay, so we can see that. And then it's had a little bit of a sell-off. Okay, so it's had a sell-off. Now the question is, why has dollar yen had a sell-off? Is this people buy, buying yen back? Is it the S&P falling? Is it the Dow falling? Are we going back into a risk-off scenario? Is the news out of China having an impact again on the markets? Well, let's let's have a look. So we're gonna we're gonna move across into the S and P 500. I'm just gonna go up to a weekly chart just because it's a little bit clearer. 
So you can see what we've got highlighted here, the areas that we're looking at. So this is a real pivotal trend line that we're interested in. Why? Because if this one breaks, we can see how heavily it's been defended after such a rapid move down in a couple of weeks, falling best part of was that from 21, 21.20 down to 18, 18.30. So that's a 270 point move on the S&P. It's a huge amount. And look at the reaction you got. Spring straight back off. Similar thing here, not as aggressive as what we saw there, and similar thing here, and again, not as aggressive. So we're looking at our shorting opportunity potentially around 1980. This is where we'd like to get short. If the market just breaks through, well, then guess what? We're going to use our support as our resistance. So watch, watch, dollar, uh, watch dollar yen, watch the S&P, watch the Dow for the correlation. The other market which we're looking at risk off, which we highlighted, as well, uh, this is the weekly chart, by the way, of CAD Yen. Now, what you see is these beautiful sort of tram lines here. You can see it's testing on the upside, then it's broken through. Now, this trend line from the bottom is a lot from a long, long time ago. You can see it comes up, and look where these two trend lines intersect. The market came down, touched it precisely, bounced off both, and it's come back up, and now it's respecting resistance. Okay, so the the question is, you're probably thinking, well, why do we not just sell here when we highlighted it last week? We highlighted looking at shorting opportunities from up here when it was down here. Well, the only thing that put us off from actually taking this trade initially was the news coming out of the Bank of Japan. So all we wanted to do was wait for the dust to settle and see how the markets are going to react to that. Fundamentals are there, technicals are there. But remember what I said, capital preservation is key. So this is something we're just going to sit on the sidelines and wait to see what happens. Now, what it might mean is I might have to drop down to a lower time frame, whether it's a daily chart, whether it's a four-hour chart, or even a one-hour chart. I don't mind. So what, what things can we start looking for? Well, we can start looking for reversal patterns where we can start seeing maybe a head and shoulders or a double, bot, a double top. Yeah, trade your first lower high. You might say, well... We can see a bit of a level through here. Price come back up to test, and you might want to sell through the low stops above the highs. Okay, there's so many different ways we can look at trading. Okay, but this is keeping ourselves in a disciplined manner and not just jumping at the first opportunity that the market presents. Okay, we're going to move over to the commodities now. So the first thing we're going to look at is gold because this one we're already in. Okay, so gold. We went long from down here at 10.75. This was basically, again, we were looking at commitment of traders. We were looking at risk off, i.e. money moving from equities into safe havens, Japanese yen, and gold. So we went long 10.75. We took our first profits at 11.20 just through here. And we've now got another buy order waiting for us through here. We're looking for that retest. You can see how close we were here the other day. Um, but it just didn't happen. It doesn't matter. We'll sit on the sidelines. I don't mind. I'm not going to chase a trade. And this is what you've got to remember. Do not tra chase trades. So gold, we've got long-term targets of around $1,200 to $1,220. It may go higher, but right now that's where we're setting our targets. Okay. Next one, well, I've already talked to you about crude when we were talking about Canadian dollar. You can see the areas of interest, what we were looking at. We were looking at shorting here. We didn't take it. Why? We were looking for it to come back up and push and test our supply zone again before it collapsed. Now, I was speaking to one of my traders uh, that I work with very closely, and it was just underneath the low of Friday's candle. And I said, look, you can sell this live up market. We can see what's happened. You've had bullish move up into supply zone. Then we have a doji indicating indecision. Now the market's had a strong sell-off. It was a perfect end of day trade if you wanted to take it. Ta initial targets have got to be these lows here. Now you can see I've drawn a counter trend trend line. If we drop down to, I don't know, let's have a look at the one hour chart. You can see markets come down. We've had a clear close below now. Any sort of retest coming back up into this zone here around $33. Perfect way to trade this market. That's the end to Trading Tuesday on the 2nd of February. Well, I hope you found the information very, very useful and you're going to put it to good use.
please click the subscribe button and the like button and I look forward to seeing you for the morning update every day this week and every coming week. We also have our post going live on Instagram, that's Phoenix Blue Trading, on our Facebook page, that's Phoenix Blue Trading also. So guys, look forward to seeing you early, bright and early in the morning and take care, good night.